just ate lunch, so I'm gonna clean up because we are headed to the gym. I had ramen noodles. I don't know about you guys, but I love the Lotus ramen noodles from Costco. They have good carbs, good protein, and like two ingredients. I'll show you. They are rice ramen from Lotus Foods, and they have eight grams of protein per cake. And per cake, they also have 40 grams of carbs, and only three grams of fat, and 240 calories. Protein is key. So then we also had some grilled chicken, and I had a little bit of hot sauce on top. So now I am cleaning up because it is time to go to the gym to get our pump on. This morning, I had a nice, easy run. So I'm feeling energized and invigorated and ready to lift some weights. I ran about six miles. I actually talked to my mom on the phone for a little bit. So my goal was to run at conversational pace. So I'm like, well, if I'm talking on the phone, I'm clearly running at conversational pace. And she asked me if I was walking Milo, which means I wasn't huffing and puffing too much. So I think I did good. I had my earphones in. I've been trying to do where I run half the run with earphones and half the run without. So I can listen to myself breathe. I have some time with my own thoughts and I wear a little bag and I just pop them in there. But I always have my phone with me just in case something happens. poured last night and it's like 90 something degrees today so it is getting super humid outside. I just ate lunch too, it's almost two o'clock. I ate a sweet potato and a chicken breast, so same chicken breast that Christy ate but I went with a sweet potato instead of noodles. Um, we're headed to the gym to do some more like lifting rather than conditioning. So being a little bit more full is totally fine headed to the gym. You definitely wanna have some carbs so you got some energy to burn. I did not run today though I have been running quite a bit more recently. I did a 60 minute bike erg instead going about 30,000 meters. I try to keep it right at about 500 meters a minute, which I know will get me to the 30,000 meters in 60 minutes. So we're gonna head to the gym. We've got some chest and triceps and a little bit of shoulders today. So we'll meet you guys at the gym. There's two things that are super important when you want to build muscle, which is what we're doing, and that's gonna be carbs and protein. When it comes to protein, there used to be this whole thought that you had to have 20 grams of protein within 30 minutes of your workout because that workout window could close. Studies are now showing that it's just keeping protein regularly throughout your day. So having five servings of 35 grams of protein four hours apart is actually gonna be as beneficial as putting in that 20 grams of protein immediately after your workout. So it doesn't have to be directly after your workout. It really just needs to be in about a four hour window around your workout. So we don't wanna go longer than four hours, either in front or behind of that workout without having 20 plus grams of protein at a time. So I weigh about 130 to 135 pounds and I aim to eat a minimum of 130 grams of protein every single day. And I usually break that up into four meals of 30 grams plus, and then I'll have maybe one meal that's a little bit higher or maybe a snack at bed, and that'll get me up to that 130 grams. But it doesn't have to be rocket science. It's just looking at your plate, naming your protein, and knowing that you have enough. And that's really gonna help fuel your recovery and also your sessions in the gym. I wanna take a minute to thank today's video sponsor and supporter of our channel, Elm. Element is something that I use every single day, and it's made with a science-backed formula to help you stay hydrated. It contains 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means no junk, no sugar, no gluten, no coloring, no BS. Electrolytes are responsible for hundreds of functions in the body, including hydration. And water alone is not enough. Element can help prevent things like headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, and sleeplessness, which can all be symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. Right now, Element is offering my subscribers, that's you all, a free sample packet with eight single serving samples. This is an awesome way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash Christy Ermo. This deal is only available to you guys, my subscribers, if you click the link below, D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash Christy Ermo, K-R-I-S-T-I-E-R-A-M-O. Now back to today's video. So we've got some pressing today and my shoulder's been bugging me for almost six months now. So I have to be super diligent whenever we're pressing that I really activate my back and my scaps. So banded pull aparts are a big one and some plate W's from the ground, holding some change plates. I'll show you guys those, just squeezing, making sure that my back is pulling its load as well. I'm not getting too far rounded forward. Makes a huge difference for me. I've been staying really light today. I'm gonna see if I can actually move some weight, but taking the time to actually not just get warm. We've been warm. I did a 60 minute bike ride. Chrissy did a nice long run. Actually make sure that I'm pulled back into a good position before we start pressing. Makes an absolute world of a difference on how I feel either during or after a workout like this. So we're starting today, we've got three sets of 10 incline dumbbell bench. We're following the PFA week one, day one. 
Uh, we'll build off this for four total weeks. I think we've got six blocks worth of work. Some of those are gonna be supersets, but this is gonna be the first thing we've got going on today. Uh, we're gonna do some warm up sets because those do not count as our working sets. The set of 10 should be challenging at some point. So if it's easy, still consider that a warm up set or crank out a couple more reps if you wanna consider it a working set. Something that we like to use a lot is RPE or rate of perceived exertion. And we use this on a scale of one to 10. So if you're on one, it's not gonna be very challenging. You could say you did one rep, you could do at least nine more reps. If you're at five, it's gonna be about 50% challenging. Like that's the amount of effort that you're put forward. If you're on a seven to an eight, you're working at 70 to 80% of your total exertion out of 100%, meaning you probably only have two or three rep more reps left in your tank. So when we say working sets, and Patrick talked about that, we wanna make sure that when we finish our set of 10, we don't feel like we could do five, six, seven more reps. We didn't go heavy enough. We didn't work hard enough or choose a weight that was heavy enough to create the adaptation that we're looking for. When we finish that set, we wanna be out of breath. We wanna feel like we only could have done maybe two or three more reps at the very most. And that's how you know you've chosen the right weight. I mentioned my shoulder was bugging me. I've been kind of figuring out what's causing the problem, but it's like trap, bicep, and pec that seems to be isolating the point that's like front delt or maybe a little bit of labrum. So we're sitting up a little bit more than like a typical incline bench. So we're kind of modifying what we've got today but it's a more comfortable position. Even my bench probably looks a little bit weird. It's kind of a mix of a really steep incline bench and a seated press. But for me, that's the position that uh, doesn't seem to irritate my shoulders. So that's what we're gonna go with today to kind of work our way around a problem, but still continue working, you know, really hard. only two sets but I might have bitten off more than I can chew we're gonna try it the way we write once we get past our compound movements the reps normally start getting a little bit higher and we just finished our tricep extensions. I've got a good pump in the triceps, which is something that you want to feel. And what we've got now is like a little bit of a finisher for our triceps and our pushing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one max effort set of push-ups. And as soon as you are about a rep or two from failure, you're going to go to an elevated push-up on a bench. Same thing's going to happen there. As many push-ups as you can get once you're a rep or two away from failure, you're going to go up to a higher bench. So they're getting easier, but I promise you, push-ups on a 24-inch bench will be like the hardest push-ups you've ever done if you do this correctly. I'm getting ready to go. These max sets sometimes mess with my head. It's like, I want somebody to tell me how many to do, not to have to challenge myself and see how far I can go, but I also like the challenge. But if you guys don't have the three alternatives, you could do these on stair steps. So I tested this out at our house with our stairs and Milo was watching me. I did my first set on the floor and then I went up two steps, did my next set, and then I went up three steps. I thought four, but I was almost vertical because I'm short. So I went up three steps and did my last set there. And it was a total pump. So if you don't have the three options, you can definitely make this work in your house if you have steps. I'm thinking one set of 45 push-ups would be a lot and that would be 15 per thing. So I'm thinking start out somewhere around 15, then maybe aim for 12 and then maybe aim for 10. We'll see how that goes. basically like a drop set of push-ups. It's crazy how the, the floor push-ups uh, were the easiest. The bench was harder and the box was like, it felt easy, you just can't do anymore. You're basically a failure. Next, we have three supersets, seated dumbbell press. So this time we, we did dumbbell press to start. Like Pat mentioned, we were a little bit more vertical just because of his shoulder. Now we will be completely vertical and it'll be 10 to 12 reps right in to 10 to 12 tricep kickbacks. So anchoring and extending with the dumbbell and then dumbbell delt front race. That'll be one superset, resting as little as possible between movements, and then resting a minute between each superset for three total rounds. All right, we got two pieces left. Our finisher for the day, is gonna be two minutes of arm circles. The goal is gonna to be to work for the, or at least as much of the two minutes as possible. 
So small circles, guys, ideally we're using five pound plates, ladies, we're using two and a half pound plates. Every time you have to take a break during that two minutes, you'll go the opposite direction when you start again. So if you start forward, you have to take a break, hold your plates. Once you start again, we'll start going backwards. So again, the goal is to work for as much of that two minutes as possible. And that's going to be our finisher. And because we don't neglect core, we've got three sets of 30 banded crunch, which is one of my favorite exercises. I talk about these all the time. They're easy to progressively overload. You can add more bands. You can add a contraction or a hold at the bottom of each rep. I just think they're extremely productive and they're a great way to build the core. Just wrapped up today. I finished off with the class workout and it was the iBig 60 workout from today, which we'll link below in the description. We love fitness. We love all kinds of fitness and we'll link everything that iBix training has to offer below. So if you guys want to check that out as well, you can do it. So thanks for tuning in today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video and we can't wait to see you in the next one. Don't forget, smash the like button. I know we always say it, but it really does help our channel and we can't wait to keep sharing more videos with you guys. Have a great day and keep crushing those workouts.